favor of the visitors by 158 runs, both the teams travel to H. Baston for the second test of the three-match series. Rohan Kanai, who had got the taste of victory for the very first time as a captain in the first test of the series, came up with just one change in the squad, bringing in Van Bern Holder in place of Inshan Ali. Other members of the team being Fredericks, Headley, Lloyd, Kalicharan, Sobers, Murray, Julian, Boyce and Lance Gibbs. England made two changes in their squad. Ryan Luckhurst replaced Graham Roof while Chris Old replaced Jon Snow. Ray Illingworth captained the English side while Boycott, Amiss, Hayes, Tony Gregg, Alan Knott, Fletcher, Arnold and Underwood completed the final 11 for the hosts. West Indies won the toss and decided to bat first. Arnold comes in with the first ball to Fredericks. a chance so again there isn't too much fun in the middle of the bat that's a beauty a beauty Ron Headley never looked the part at all out there this morning. Beautifully bowled by Chris O. A little bit of movement away from him. But in fairness, he never really looked like making a score here today. Chris O. recalled to the England side. Am I facing Arnold? And that's it, and he's caught. A good catch by Tony Gregg at second slip. Another failure for the West Indies captain and a disappointment in front of his home supporters. And Jeff Arnold doing it again for England. Snapping up the wicket of Ron Kanai for just two. Fresh over to Clive Lloyd. It's a better shot by the West Indies. Nicely pushed through the offside. A long reach of... Clive Lloyd bringing in three runs. Chris Old now, bowling to Clive Lloyd. And that must be very close. Clive Bird having a long look there, and he's given it. A long, hard look there at Clive Lloyd. It really did look a very, very close thing. And umpire Bird weighed up all the possibilities and then raised the finger. Took a long time to do so. But Clive Lloyd is out, the third West Indian wicket to fall with the total at 39. It wasn't uh, quite where it was meant to go. Chris Old had no chance of cutting it off. Boy Fredericks has survived since half past 11. He's made 33. He's had a little bit of luck. He's played a missed several occasions outside the off stump but always been willing to go for his shots particularly anything short he's a great hooker of the ball always looking to play the hook shot a pitch well up a half volley put away without any bother at all underwood given up the chase it goes through for four runs Chris Old continued from the pavilion end. Well, the half volley beautifully put away. Four runs from the moment it left the bat. And a great catch. Frank Hayes picking up a fine catch. Kelly Charan gone, the fourth wicket down for 93. A smart bit of work at first slip there by Frank Hayes. Really an excellent catch, a second wicket for Jeff Arnold, who's now got the remarkable figures of two for 14.
heavens. What a chance to go begging. No wonder Greg looks disappointed there. Straight between the two slip fieldsmen. Neither of them wanting it. And for the first time in quite some time, Fredericks launches into the attack from an attempted bouncer from Tony Gregg. Fairly ambitious delivery from the medium pacer on this pitch. Going for two, and it'll be his 50. Frederick's half century comes up. About two behind square leg to Chris Old. And he's out. Now that's bad luck for Sobers, but it's well bowled by Chris Old. That ball darting back quite sharply at Gary Sobers from outside off stump. A very thick inside edge dragged the ball back onto the stumps. And Sobers out for 21. Ill fortune for the former West Indies captain. Just short of Tony Gregg. They really are a long way back there, those slips. I'll follow four runs. Lusty's pulled one out. Beautifully timed shot there from Roy Fredericks. Oh, well, that's the 150 coming up. It's taking 286 minutes. Fredericks now on to 71. Fredericks greets him with a boundary. The uphill's quite quick here. Fredericks, six hours in for his 98, ready to face the first ball of the second day's play. Good Yorker, the clip through, four runs, no doubt a hesitation at all about it. Big gap at mid on, and Roy Fredericks in the first over goes through to his test match century. And just the second 100 is made in Test Match Cricket. It's taken him four minutes over the six hours, included 12 fours. And this is in his 50th innings in Test Matches. Lovely shot that, and it's four runs, boycott. I think got his fingers to that. That was a good stroke from Fredericks. Hold him. The one that comes back with the arm. Murray, the sixth figure to go down. The first success for England for a long, long time. This partnership has gone on from 128 to 242 broken then by Derek Underwood bringing one back with the arm from outside the off stump Roy Frederick standing on 149 now and it's Chris Old to bow to Julian's that was a beautiful stroke off the back foot that really was the stroke of the morning that's it the angle bat, run it gently down to third man. Bat high in the air, 150 to Roy Fredericks. The marathon performance it's been, 477 minutes has been out there. And it includes 17 fours. 150 out of 263. The end, I suppose, justifying the means. Beautifully fielded by Arnold, and this could be out if not, no, wrong end. No blame there really for Alan Knott, he was whipping the bales off at this end. 
the misunderstanding between the English fieldsman and keeper. That's in the air, and Amos is coming around under it. It should be out. He's caught it well, and Frederick's is out for 150. Julian's giving him a long, hard look as he goes past him. Concentration, I think, broken there by that near run out. And straight away after that, he twice tried to hit Underwood out of the ground. The second time, Amos taking a well-judged catch, running away towards the press box end and taking it over his left shoulder as he moved away from Fredericks. Well, yesterday, Illingworth went for 162 deliveries and only one of them was hit to the boundary. He's bowled two today. One of them has already found its way to the pickets. For now, as the West Indies innings is uh, not going to a close, they've still got some batting left, but uh, as it's down to its seventh wicket. Batting with his right foot actually on the batting crease, not worrying about having it behind as the ball spins. And that must be close. He's given it, yes. That really was going straight for middle stump, I should think, and Illingworth's not turning the ball. I couldn't see any way that wasn't going to hit middle stump halfway up. It was a most ambitious stroke by Keith Boyce. He gets an off spinner bowling over the wicket, not turning. Oh, what a good looking shot. Hit that with an absolute minimum of effort. Beautiful stroke. Such ease of execution there. Just a full flow of the bat. Billingworth now, the clouds coming over, it's uh, looking a bit grey up above, and Illingworth the ball to Julian. Lovely stroke, beautifully timed. Frank Hayes did very well there to get to that ball. Beautiful shot, perfectly picked up over the top, four runs. Very sensible shot there by Julian, takes him on to 50, his first 50 in a test match. He's done something to brighten the afternoon here for the Goodley crowd, which has assembled at Edgbaston. His 50 came in just 98 minutes, included nine fours. And another turn for Jeff Arnold. Once again, the field pushed very well back for Arnold. Only a slip in the gully. Nobody else anywhere near the pitch. That's in the air, just short, short of going. Has he caught it? He's having a look. It's a great catch if he's taken it, and he's got it. And Bernard Julian set off straight away. He knew it caught it. A little nod to Jeff Arnold. A nice gesture there by Bernard Julian because a lot of people I feel would have stayed. He's gone for the big one, it's in the air, it should be a catch. Safe for Harry. Boy got a very safe pair of hands anywhere away from the wicket, making no mistake. A third wicket for Derek Underwood, coming well out of this match with three for 40. Hold other man out for six. Gibbs undefeated on one. And West Indies all out for three two seconds. It wasn't expected from the attacking batting lineup of the West Indies. They scored at a rate of 2.18 and were all out for 327 in the 150th over. Roy Frederick scored 150 in eight and a half hours. Only Bernard Julian played positive cricket, scoring 54 of 83 balls. West Indian defensive approach ensured most of the English bowlers attained economical figures. Arnold, Old and Underwood picked up three wickets each, while Captain Illingworth, who gave away just 37 runs from his 32 overs, got a wicket. Will England come up with some different approach? Find out after a short break in 1973.
Batting first, West Indies scored 327 in the first inning. So let's watch the English reply. Due to authentic leg glance by Boycott. Going down the leg side. Boycott now waits for Van Burn Holder. Holder is uh, bowling from the pavilion end. And the 50 up. Boycott goes to 31. Amos to 18. And uh, home fans happy with Quite a spirited reply, 50 from 16 overs. In response to the West Indians, 327 in their first innings. That 50 took 67 minutes. Put away very fine by Amos. Holding an unfortunate fielder, home custom, and he must collect on another boundary. Oh, and Boycott struggling. If, oh, it was a bad throw. And wicket keeper and Boycott colliding. He got quite a nasty blow there. Run straight into Murray, trying to get back. to play on the offside, a big roar for Jeffrey Boycott's 50. <laughs> well, a good performance by the Yorkshire captain. It's 50 coming just a little over two hours, 131 minutes. Such a consistent performer in test matches, 50 out of 91, and the 34th time he has reached 50 in just 56 test matches. We got, in fact, injured yesterday with that uh, collision with wicket keeper Derek Murray. Is uh, not he wasn't feeling too well this morning, and uh, is coming off the field. And he'll be marked down for the present anyway as retired hurt. He's probably going to have his ribs strapped. One. Not a very good shot, he's out caught behind. Good catch there by Derek Murray. Amy's going for the hook shot. It's not a shot he plays with a lot of success. So Weston is making the breakthrough here. Bernard Julian coming on in his first over, getting Amy's caught behind. Good, firm, aggressive square cut by Lockhurst. Breaks the monotony, brings in four runs. As well bowled, swinging Yorker. Very much an edge stroke by Brian Lockhurst. Well, that must be very close. It's out, I should think, yes. Luckhurst just padding up there to a slower swinging Yorker. 
And that was palpably OBW. Ball didn't swing this morning. And Luckhurst coming out after lunch probably thought it wasn't going to swing after the interval. But that one came back quite sharply. But 150 comes up now for England. It's been uh, a laborious process. Starting the day at 96 without loss. They're now 150 for two. Man out, Amos for 56 and Luckhurst for 12. Tony Gregg, the batsman, and Lance Gibbs, the bowler. And that's safe. It's a good long hit into the crowd. Six runs. It was a good hit from Tony Gregg. He hit it straight rather than across, as he had tried to do on two or three other occasions. In the air, hooked over the top, down a long leg. And lucky to get away with that. He's played some good hook shots, but that wasn't one of them. It still brings him four runs. That's it, Tony Gregg out, smart catch behind on the leg side, Fredericks the fielder, very good safe pair of hands round there, Julian first over with the new ball, Tony Gregg turning him round the corner, he's caught by Fredericks for 27. Delighted West Indian supporters seeing the end of Tony Gregg, a partnership there with Frank Hayes worth 52. That's in the air, and it's out. Kelly Turan holding on to the hook. So at long last, the short ball paying off for the West Indies. Hayes has had a lot of them to face. Initially, he pulled them with a great deal of certainty. The last occasion in that previous over from Holder, he went for the same shot, but a fairly lucky four over the top. This time, his luck was out. Played the hook shot all right, but made the cardinal error of hooking it high in the air. Didn't get over it and on top of it. And Kelly Chiran at long leg, waiting for that. Making no mistake. Four runs. Beautiful shot. Hammered very hard. Fast Julian. Well, that really shook Ray Julian. He, uh, Bernard Julian, he can't believe it now, I don't think. And it's bowled him. A jubilant holder. Another wicket for him. Alan Knott playing across that ball, losing his off stump. And West Indies really coming back into this game now. Three wickets to them in quick succession. The last one to go, Alan Knott. Another naught for the little Kent wicketkeeper. What an unhappy time he's having with the bat in the Test matches this year. It's a great catch. Illingworth staying. Now Lloyd has hurt himself out there. And I don't like this. I remember Lloyd in Australia. The umpire's going across to ask whether or not Illingworth is out. Umpire Bird, umpire Fag. The same situation. Illingworth is the batsman. He'll be facing Bernard Julian. Illingworth made no move to go. Obviously, from where he was, he could see that the ball had bounced. Good looking hook shot by Illingworth. Holder, the man retrieving it. 
from the boundary. It's 241 for five in answer to the West Indies, 327. West Indies certainly have bowled well today. Kanhai has set attacking fields. The last one. And that's up in the air, but it's safe. It's first bounce, well wide of third man. Four runs. Well, taking a sweater looks like a break for him. West Indies, of course, have been without the services of Keith Boyce since before lunch today. Off the field with a very sore heel. He's back on there now, but he's not yet been able to bowl. 2.45 for five as Older takes a sweater. Older moving in again. And that's out, LBW. No hesitation at all there by umpire Fag. Looked an absolutely plum one-two. Ray Illingworth moving in, going back, covering everything up, and Holder able to bring the ball back. So Illingworth out, LBW to, Ver to, to Van Bern Holder for 27. Jeff Boycott then to resume his innings. He's on 54. The score now on 249 for six. Boycott on 54. Immediately getting the treatment. One dug in sharply, wrapping him round the shoulders. All going back, of course, to that controversial decision yesterday hot reception for Jeff Boycott well, that gave him a, a very nasty blow right on the elbow well that really is bad luck for Boycott he's obviously in a lot of pain and I think the less said about some of the remarks coming from the crowd there, the better. Uh, coming through with a quick one, they'll have to hurry in, hit the wicket, he's out, he's run out, a magnificent throw by Kanai, really superb, he'd only one stump to aim at. And poor old Chris Old, he's only had a couple of balls, and he's run out without scoring. That's through a chance. Sobers down in that at second slip. Well, he'll be disappointed there. No question he should have clung hold of that one. Oh, he swung at that one. That's gone over the mid-wicket. Four runs. That is the first boundary of the morning. And very well struck by Jeff Arnold over the over mid wicket. Well, as far as England are concerned. And that's out. Holder. Well caught. Very nice catch that. It was going away from him on his left hand. Fletcher hit it very hard. And Holder judged it beautifully. Out for 52. Foothold of all servers. As Jeffrey Boycott comes out to bat. Retired her twice in two balls, thereby creating some sort of a record, I should think, on Saturday. It's a good shot. Cunnich runs under it and he's caught it. Arnold hit that beautifully, but he hit it straight down Kelly Turan's throat. Sobers, another wicket. The two to fall this morning. Joy from the West Indies supporters. Ah! 
That's out. The end of the innings. A good top spinner there from Lance Gibbs. He'd been spinning the ball quite sharply. And then a good quicker ball that went straight on. That's clever bowling. And the end of the England innings. Underwood out for two. Caught Derek Murray, bowled Gibbs. Giving Gibbs his first wicket of the innings. Bowled very well and very accurately. And Boycott remains 56 not out. England were even more defensive in their approach, scoring at a rate of even less than two runs and over. Chef Boycott, Dennis Amish and Keith Fletcher all scored half centuries, but no one could convert it into a big one. Boycott had to leave the field twice during his unbeaten 56. The match also saw a drama on the third day when umpire Arthur Fagg refused to take to the field after West Indies queried him on the not-out decision given in favour of Boycott. However, he resumed after one over. Holder and Sobers got three wickets each while Julian and Gibbs got two and one wicket respectively. Welcome back. In Cricket Replay today, we have gone back to the year 1973 and showing you the second test match between England and the West Indies played at Edgbaston. With defensive approach by both the teams and a lot of drama on the field, the match was headed towards a draw. West Indian openers Headley and Fredericks come out to bat with the Taurus leading by 22 runs in the first innings. movement in that uh, side spin area at the back. Now the first ball of uh, the second innings, Arnold rolling to Headley. Score runs. Catch that. The uphill was very, very fast down there, and it was a well timed stroke. A little chance there, yes, a great catch by Alan Knott going for the hook. Could possibly have been off the glove, but a good diving catch away to his right by Alan Knott. First blood to Arnold, first wicket to go down, Roy Fredericks. Three slips and the gully for Canai, facing his first ball from Arnold. Immediately off the mark, flipped it through mid on. Turning, coming back for the third run. So Rowan Canai confidently away. A good hand for him here in front of his home crowd. That's over the top, he's really having a go, he's setting him a light. He's only received 10 balls, and he's already made 15. Oh, and that's it. Tossed high in the air. Alan not picking up his second victim, the second West Indian wicket to fall. Good ball, went through quickly, moved away from Headley. See, Headley out for 11. Clive Lloyd now facing Chris Old. And that's belted away around the square leg with no bother at all. Hardly short of a length, but pitching outside the leg stump allowing Clive Lloyd virtually a free hit at it. Beautiful shot, four runs from the moment it left the bat. Oh, we've seen the short one put away square, now the over-pitched one driven with such tremendous force through mid -air. Got the hook in all right this time.
Good heavens. It really did travel. Tony Gregg saying that he'd like a man out there, but he could put three there, and it wouldn't have been enough to stop that four. Oh, what a great stroke. Split the field there. Four men on that offside. Only within 15 yards of one another. And that ball got through between extra cover and mid-off. And neither of those two fieldsmen had the slightest chance of getting to it. Underwood from the press box end. Little push. Can I back it up well? He's through for his 50. Other fine innings from Clive Lloyd. 50 in a match which has featured a lot of so slow cricket. His 50 has come in just 96 minutes. Pushes it and runs. Lloyd backing up quickly. Can I home at the other end? And the first 50 of this series to run, can I? And that's out. Miss hit coming down. Trying to repeat the shot. Jeff Arnold looking a little surprised. Took that catch at square cover point on the offside. a beautiful shot four runs lovely stroke off his legs there for to mid wicket for four oh and a beautiful piece of work there absolutely delightful ball seeing the end of Kelly Turan beaten from the moment it left Underwood's hand Nicely held back, found that little bit of rough, committed the little left-hander out too quickly, turned, found the gap between bat and pad. Turner, it's a good piece of fielding. It's gone for overthrows now. It'll go for four, so they'll take five in all for the thing. Turner picking it up brilliantly, throwing it on the bounce to Underwood. He couldn't gather it, and there were two men backing up who couldn't gather it either. No need to run for that. It's a, a, good, a change of pace by Underwood, but a fraction over pitched. Sobers was in beautiful position for that. He was really waiting for that by the time it arrived up at the batting end. <laughs> Tremendous power, that. That is out. Clive Lloyd getting it right on the bottom of the bat. Not very fortunate there. That kept very, very low indeed. I think he probably got it right down the queue in, which makes it quite a remarkable catch by Alan Knott. But it crept along the ground. And Lloyd, from starting off to play a square cut, finally had to chop at it like an axe. Service stroke that whip away there through mid wicket just forward of square takes him now on to 17, brings up the West Indies 200, and their lead now 233 with five wickets in hand. Lovely stroke, David Turner needs not bother going after that. Service could work. Maybe a fraction restricted by this knee injury. And Murray gets off the mark with the first ball of the morning, having battered yesterday evening for exactly 20 minutes without scoring. A 
great stroke. First time Sobers really has come down the pitch this morning. And he was right there to the pitch of the ball. And Murray is gone. You can't be much more unfortunate than that. Hooking away there and slamming the bat down on top of the stumps. Really lost control of that at the top of the backswing. Through the gap, no second slip. Would have been a comfortable catch. Instead, it's gone through for four runs. No half measures about that. Really glorious shot. Oh, tremendous blow again by Sobers going through for four. It surely can't be long before Kanai brings them in. And will continue in now to Sobers. And he's bowled him. So head up in the air a little bit. Possibly a shade carefree. He's got 74. He's seen West Indies into an almost impregnable position and really could afford to relax, I suppose. And out. Keith Boy's not even looking for an umpire's decision. Little catch behind. Keith Boy, the hero of the first test, having another batting failure here. Caught behind first ball by... Arnold by not off Arnold. Tony Gregg now a ball to Bernard Julian. Bowled him very comprehensively. Julian, who had been suggesting to Holder that he should play straighter, really didn't follow his own advice. Four runs. Taken off Midland Lake Stump, a good Yorker from Greg there. Holder getting it away for four. 300 up on the board now. So the West Indies lead goes to 324. Low crouch, Van Van Holder, and intense concentration. All right hand. is out. Buckhurst the man at cover. The West Indian second innings ends at 302. So their lead is 324. At 15 overs an hour that would be about 65 overs which would mean a scoring rate of uh, four and a half an over. I think we can discount that as um, a probability and um, look to the question of uh, whether or not England will be able to hold out against an attack that will uh, make them make two starts. Boycott not batting. The H. Baston crowd finally watched some good batting as West Indies scored 302 runs in the second innings, giving England a winning target of 325 with almost 230 minutes remaining in the test match. Clive Lloyd, who was the top scorer for the West Indies, missed his century by just six runs. Jeff Arnold picked up four wickets for England, giving away 43 runs. Underwood and Tony Gray took two wickets each, while Old and Illingworth bagged a wicket apiece. Will England go for the target of 325 runs in 230 minutes? Find out after a very short break. Baston in the year 1973. After some defensive tactics by both the teams in the first innings, West Indies posted a target of 325 for England to score in 230 minutes. Will the hosts go for it and level the series? Let's find out. According to Amos. J. 
It's a waste of the new ball if ever I've seen it. I'll bounce the first ball. And that's just carried, has it carried? Then if it led out possibly there to Murray. But it shows you that this wicket has never ever got any pace at all in it. And that's it. No, he's dropped him. Brown can I missed him at first slip. That's what I was mentioning, bowling on and outside. Amos is off stump. Fine shot again off his legs. Four very good runs. That's the 50 partnership. So the 50 partnership in 77 minutes. And four to Lackhurst. Again, room for the stroke there. Stepping away outside leg stump. That is out. That's gone a long way off the edge of the bat out towards first slip. And Luckhurst is the first wicket to go. Really slashing away at that very wide delivery from Clive Lloyd. Gibbs again now. He'll bowl to Amos. Amos is on 47. Four runs. The moment. The ball pitched just short of a length. Hey, Amos just stepping outside leg stump to bring up his 50 with a slashing square cut. Amos goes on to 51. In 128 minutes. Golden opportunity here for Amos to make 100 the test match Oh, that must be out. Oh, what a stroke. Well, it wasn't a stroke. So the astonishing, the number of players at the moment who are shouldering arms to straight deliveries or almost straight deliveries and getting out LBW. Frank Hayes, the best young stroke player around at the moment, just shouldering arms there and becoming the second man out in this England second innings. 100 for two. 51 to Amos. Hayes has gone. So too has Luckhurst. Hayes almost out. The very first ball he received from Lloyd, shouldering arms. And Keith Fletcher comes out to bat now at 100 for two. No mid off. The chase for holder moving around from short extra. And this Amos helping himself there to four if it's half volley. Oh, 
There's a short one put away effectively by Amos. originally set for England when West Indies were all out at one o'clock was 325 there was never any hope of them getting them or even attempting to get them again drifting slowly towards a draw featured there by a fine extra cover drive by Keith Fletcher and he's a player who certainly started to cash in on this, this secondary attack 26 now so just time as you can see for one more over 181 for the loss of two men two men out Luckhurst and Hayes as much at least ending in smiles and through some fairly tough moments over the last five days Amos quite happy to take a single get to the other end leave the rest of it to Fletcher That's it, the last ball, bowled by Julian to Fletcher. The clock just past half past five and the end of the second test match in this series of three against the West Indies. Well, it was evident from the very first over that England were more keen on saving the test. England scored 182 for two in 67 overs with Dennis Amiss unbeaten on 86. Keith Fletcher remained not out at 44, while Brian Luckhurst scored 42. With England going for defensive tactics, West Indian bowlers too lacked the firepower to get England all out. The two English wickets to fall went to Clive Lloyd. So the second test match ended in a team draw. West Indies still lead the series 1-0. It certainly wasn't a match which crowd would have enjoyed, but the drama involving umpire Arthur Fagg made this match worth a replay. Replay. It's time to replay cricket in Cricket Replay. The year is 1973 where West Indies are on their ninth ever tour of England. West Indies won the first test at the Oval by 158 runs, while the second test at its Baston was drawn. So coming into the third test at Lords, West Indies had the upper hand with a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. Coming into the all-important match at Lords, both the teams made one change in their squad. Ron Hadley made way for Morris Foster in the West Indian lineup with Fredericks, Murray, Kanhai, Lloyd, Kalicher, and Sobers, Julian, Boyce, Holder, and Lance Gibbs completing the final 11. For England, Bob Willis returned in the team replacing Chris Hold, with the other players being Boycott, Amiss, Luckhurst, Hayes, Fletcher, Tony Gray, Illingworth, Knott, Arnold, and Derek Underwood. On a good batting pitch, Rohan Kanai won the toss and decided, expectedly, to bat first. Well, that's 
something one must look at again. Keith Fletcher, who missed an early catch in the last test match. Uh, not carrying to slip. Pitching about a yard in front of Tony Gregg. start for Willis. First blood to England here. Murray the batsman out. Clean bowl by Willis for four. Short one pulled away to mid-wicket. Boycott given up. The chase four runs. Short, pulled away with all the ease in the world. It wasn't even a bounce, it was a long hop from Tony Gregg. Dealt very effectively with by Fredericks. Down by Canai. <laughs> Lovely straight there from Canai. Give himself some room for the straight there. Tony Gregg short again. 